Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning. It is a beautiful Friday morning here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden, and today we are going to wrap up the week with a pretty big morning this morning. My name is Milo, and today we are here behind the scenes, of course. I haven't necessarily showed you exactly where, but those of you who've been tuning into Z Learning, you already know where we are today. We are behind the scenes at our grizzly bear habitat. We're going to be hanging out with Butch and Sundance, our two adult male grizzly bears this morning. And we're going to be doing uh, quite a few different things with them, to be honest. So I hope that you stick around because not only are we going to see them behind the scenes, we're actually going to get inside of their habitat safely, of course, not with the bears. We're gonna make sure that they're safe and secure, locked into their bedrooms. And then once the coast is clear, then we are all going to head out on habitat, you and me and the keepers, and we're going to have some fun spreading out some enrichment for our grizzly bears. And then we'll wrap up heading out to the viewing area to watch them enjoy their surprise this morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. It's so great to see all of you on a Friday morning. Happy first day of May, by the way. Good morning, Faith, Audrey, Dylan. Nice to see you, Rebecca. Thank you all so much for tuning in for Z Learning. We've had a big week this week and we're gonna end with a big finale. So here in a second, we're actually going to head into our barn area or kind of our behind the scenes backup where those bedrooms would be, where Butch and Sundance, our two brother bears are hanging out. I apologize for our wind this morning. You might be having a little hard time hearing me, but we're actually going to head inside where it's going to be a little bit quieter. Let's go ahead and turn around this camera so that way you can get a better view and let's go ahead and knock on our door. Oh, might help if I turn around my camera correctly. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's see if anybody's there. We're joined by Catherine and Christina, two people that you've actually already met. So if you remember, not too long ago, we were hanging out with Catherine in Koala and Christina in Otter. My gosh, I could almost not even remember that. We've been doing so much Z-learning. This is our 32nd episode already. It's a lot. But these are two of our mammal keepers, of course, and you are familiar with them from Koala and Otter, but they also take care of our grizzly bears as well. And you notice they have their gloves on, their masks on, we are all suited up. But ladies, we also are joined by two of our biggest animals in this area. Do you mind actually heading down and introducing us to who we're gonna meet this morning? Yeah, so when you look down the hallway, you'll see a yellow line. Ooh, perfect, And yeah. our bears are on the right, and then we're gonna stay to the left of that yellow line just for safety. Absolutely, so yeah. even though you're joining us all virtually, we're gonna follow all the safety rules. We're staying behind that yellow line. I'm gonna let them go first, so of course. And then we're going to join right behind them. But if you take a look, our bears are already back here and hanging out with us. This is Sundance. That's hanging out right in front of me this morning. And then Butch is gonna be a little bit further down. But right now, like we talked about when we were outside, these are our behind the scenes bedrooms. So our bears have shifted into them for right now. So that way we can work closely with them. And then in a little bit, when we head out onto Habitat, they will be secured back here so that way we can safely go inside of the bear habitat this morning. Y'all are getting a great view of the boys. All right, Catherine, can you kind of tell us a little bit more about how to tell these two apart, kind of what makes them unique? <laughs> so it's definitely not super easy to tell them apart because they are brothers. Um, Sundance has a longer snout and typically has a lighter color, so it kind of goes with his name, you know, Sun. And then, so Sundance over here on the yeah. right hand side with his head down. <laughs> yeah, Butch has a darker face, a shorter snout, um, and that's how we tell them apart. And then Butch tends to be a little bit bigger, but that's also hard to tell because it's only by a few pounds usually. <laughs> now, both of these boys were born back in 2002, so they are right around 18 years old. So they are full grown adult grizzly bears. But you also might kind of notice it might be a little challenging to see through the mesh, which we don't mind right now because we're on the safe side of the mesh, of course. But the bears are going through a kind of a seasonal change right now. Do you mind kind of telling us a little bit more about what they're going through this spring? So our bears don't go into hibernation, but they go through something called torpor, which is so I like to explain hibernation as like a deep, 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 deep sleep. And then mm -hmm. torpor is like a little bit lighter sleep. So in the winter time, they will eat less food, um, their hair will get really thick, and they will prepare to do a lot of sleeping. 
Um, and then when the spring rolls around, they're gonna shed all that fur, start eating more, and they're gonna bulk up to get ready for winter when they do eat less. So that's why right now, like, their hair is kind of thin because they're shedding. So just like your dog at home, when you have hair all over your floor that you have to <laughs> vacuum, we find hair everywhere right now. So that's why they look a little scraggly, but it's perfectly normal for them to do this. <laughs> and right now, both of these boys are, I guess, kind of impatiently waiting. They saw the buckets full of treats that both of the keepers are actually going to be kind of interacting them with them with during a training session. Now, you've seen training sessions before if you join along for Z-Learning, whether it was with our otters and Christina or even our sea lions earlier this week, actually when we met our harbor seals. But we appreciate all those questions that are coming in. It's great to see actually our other team members are responding to those right now, since right now our focus is Sundance and Butch. But Catherine, and Christina, if you want to go ahead and start those training sessions, let's go ahead and start to get an up-close look of how you interact with the bears kind of through a positive way. Let's go ahead and take a peek actually into one of these buckets because I'm curious what they're eating this morning and I bet all of you are because when you think of bears, you probably think of <laughs> fish and honey but it looks like they're not eating that. Christina, tell us what they're eating this morning. Uh, so these are some apples, and we usually use apples or grapes for their training sessions. They will be getting other treats when they go out onto the yard later for enrichment, but this is normally what we use for training sessions. Perfect. So these are the extra sweet treats. These are the ones that taste the best to them, I'm guessing? Yes. These are like the big bonuses. They don't want to... You guys like, just keep them motivated. Of course, they want the yummy stuff. <laughs> they do get these part of their diet every day, but this is their favorite part of their diet, so they always go for their apples first. So they're always very motivated um, for training with their apples. Perfect. Makes sense. All sliced up, ready to go, and so are the bears. <laughs> <laughs> So just something to remember is that we always do positive reinforcement. So they get a treat. They get to participate if they want to, and they don't have to participate. A lot of times when they're starting to wake up, they're not quite as motivated to train, so you might see them be a little slow, but that's normal. They're allowed to do whatever they want to do. Absolutely. We do everything on bear time here in this area. So, of course, if they are slower, we have to work with that. And if maybe they skip a behavior or maybe don't do something perfectly correct, we just redirect. Instead of focusing on that, we go ahead and kind of move to the next behavior and kind of go off of what the bear's moods are for the day. But you all are getting a great view of those big, long claws here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Keep those questions coming on in, everybody. Eventually, we're actually going to head out on habitat here while the bears are secure back here. But we'll get a closer view with both of the bears or one of the bears. What are your all plans this morning? We'll start with Sundance and do a little training session, session with him. And then we'll move on to Butch and see what Butch wants to do today. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get started. So those of you who are tuning in at home who are just joining us, we're behind the scenes in our grizzly bear bedrooms. Right now, both of our bears are actually separated. So that way they have time to focus on their own training session. But right now you're watching Christina actually lead a positive reinforcement training session with Sundance, one of our grizzly bears. So all of these different behaviors that involve movement, opening his mouth, presenting his paws, these are all a part of our husbandry behaviors that allow us to get a better view of their entire bodies in the least invasive way possible. And then of course they're reinforced with those very yummy apple slices that he's enjoying this morning. But you also notice that Christina has a mask on too while we're working closely with our animals. And of course those gloves on as well while we're handling food. But all those different body parts, they don't just include the mouth and the paws. Our bears can actually present their ears. They can lean into the side for injections as well or to get different treatments and to truly get a full perspective of their entire body. Now that tool that you just got a quick view of that Christine is holding is what's called a target stick. And the bears have been trained to kind of place their body in cue with that. Good. And just like what you saw was a big presentation of his whole entire side of his body. The target pole is something that we use with all our animals to start new behaviors and you can actually make one at home, just yeah. any stick and a ball on the end and you can train your dog to do a lot of different things. We just use it to direct their head into different directions and that's how we train them to do their behaviors. So that might be something fun you can do while you're stuck at home for a couple <laughs> weeks. Absolutely. And even if you don't have a pet dog or a cat at home to train, 
Maybe make a training stick and practice with some of your favorite stuffed animals at home while we're socially distancing. And always remember, it doesn't have to be a dog or a cat. We actually train reptiles here and fish and all kinds of animals. So any animal can be trained, even if you have chickens. I've seen chickens <laughs> being trained before. That is so true. So those of you that have fish at home, there is your challenge for today. See what kind of trained behaviors you can do with your fish <laughs> during this time of social distancing. All right, so that was a very brief training session because right now our focus right now is checking out the bears, of course, and then getting them prepped and ready to go out on habitat here this morning. So right now Catherine is going to switch and we're going to actually head on over to Butch. So we're going to go through some similar kind of behaviors. Both of these boys actually know kind of a good handful of behaviors that are pretty similar. So Faith, that was a great question. How tall is he when they stand up? Grizzly bears can reach a height of about 10 feet tall when they stand completely upright. Let's show your teeth again. Okay. Hopefully y'all are getting a great view of all these different parts of a bear body. I know when we're typically open here at Riverbanks, you can get a good view of them through the viewing windows, but here is a much up, more up close and personal view. Now, just like what we did yesterday with our penguins, it was kind of a peek into our backstage encounters. Um, we offer a similar experience back here with our bears as well. Okay, hopefully you all saw what Catherine just did there. Did you see that she was kind of tapping him with her fingertip? Christina, tell us why she was doing that actually. Uh, so that lead-in behavior can be used for several different things. You can obviously get a great view of the side of the bear, but also we use that behavior to train injection training. So if you saw Catherine tapping at his hind quarters, that's because that would be normally where we would put an injection. So we can either get vaccinations um, like your pets at home, or we can use that to safely put him to sleep to do a full exam. And that way um, everything is really stress-free for the bears and they know exactly what's coming. Absolutely. That's always our top priority is for any of our interactions with our animals to be as stress-free and reduce the stress as best we can. Um, so working with them and practicing these different behaviors, our bears are, of course, perfectly healthy right now. They're not under the weather, but we always have to be prepared for any sort of circumstances. So practicing all those different behaviors on a regular basis is extra important. All right, y'all, we fed them all those different apples. They have a full stomach now. Well, partially at least. <laughs> And we're going to actually head out. I think they know exactly what's going on. So right now, let's confirm. Catherine, Christina, everything is secure. We are safe to head out on Habitat? Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, so everybody who's joining in, it sounds like there's almost 600 of you joining in this morning. We are actually going to head out inside the bear habitat, get a grizzly bear size view, while these two boys are secure back here. So Christina, if you want to go ahead and lead the way. I'm going to go ahead and follow you out onto Habitat. And I think we actually have some special surprises for them. So right now we are actually in the backup area of our grizzly bear barn, you could call it. So you notice all this different mesh, protective areas. Our bears are checking out to see where we're going this morning. But once we get through this doorway, we will actually be out on bear habitat. All right, everybody, you're getting a true grizzly bear view this morning. <laughs> all right, so Christina, part of your normal routine is actually doing exactly what we're doing right now. This isn't necessarily just special just for Z learning. This is routine. So what are we actually gonna be doing this morning? Uh, so before you guys all tuned in, we got the yard pretty much all set to go. So what we're gonna be working on right now is creating some enrichment for the bears. Awesome. Okay, so enrichment today looks like it involves a couple of different ingredients. Honey, cinnamon, and pop popcorn. Okay, so I will be honest though, just for all of you tuning in, there's no butter all over this popcorn. Yeah, it's salt free. Air pop it's not the kind of popcorn you're probably gonna to wanna to eat at home, but for the bears, when it's covered in honey and cinnamon, oh, they are all about it. <laughs> so this is a special treat for the bears. They don't get um, sweet things like honey every day, but they do really enjoy it. So it does add some flavor to this normally flavorless popcorn. <laughs> and then a little bit of cinnamon. Bears have an extremely um, strong sense of smell. So cinnamon can be used for not only flavor, but also to, um, get those senses going. Absolutely. And that's such a good point, Christina. In fact, if you all check out our caption today, there's a really interesting fact about grizzly bears. Did you all know 
that grizzly bears have a sense of smell that is seven times stronger than a bloodhound's. That is amazing to think of. They have such a powerful snout for smelling. So Christina just mixed up all the popcorn. I'll even say with my very poor sense of smell, it smells delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then Christina is actually grabbing our Kong toys. Those of you who have big dogs at home, you might recognize this brand. It's truly exactly what you would buy for your pets at home. Our bears are actually pretty good with all these different enrichment items. They know it's food and what's not. So they haven't destroyed our Kongs quite yet, even yeah, though they are if, definitely strong if enough to. you too. guys notice how this Kong looks very intact, the bears <laughs> have had this for months. Wow. Um, so they are very delicate with their enrichment. They know what is food and what's not food. So they'll use their long tongues to go inside to get all that popcorn out, and then they don't really mess with the outside too much. That is perfect. I just saw, what was it? Was it Carly? Carly had a question of, do they fight? Well, if you've ever been to Riverbanks, you've probably seen our brother bears wrestling. They love to hang out with each other and wrestle all day long. Catherine's joining us and she's gonna fill up a couple of conks too, it looks like. But don't worry, all of that is simply just play fighting. These boys get along very, very well together. In fact, they've spent their entire lives together. They arrived here when they were just a few months old. They arrived to Riverbanks actually as orphans. And like we said earlier, they were born in 2002, so they are right about 18 years old. So we wanted to give a shout out, Witch and Sundance, when they were orphans, they actually had a sister, and her name is Tundra. She's at Denver Zoo, so we wanted to give a shout out to Tundra. Everyone go to Denver Zoo's page and check, check out what <laughs> she looks like. She's a beautiful girl. Love it. We have to give a shout out for all those relatives, whether they're relatives of our staff members or our animals. So check out Denver Zoo's Facebook account and see if you can find some updates on Tundra the grizzly bear. So we have a little leftover and we'll just scatter that around. Perfect. Awesome. We'll go ahead and scatter it around. Let me go ahead. I'll grab a couple of Kongs myself. Got it gloved up and everything. And now what we're going to do is all three of us are actually going to go ahead and spread these all around the bear habitat. The more hidden that they can become, you can see Catherine spreading out the popcorn. We're kind of in the shady part of the habitat right now, but I'm going to guess this over here might be a pretty good view. So we're gonna go ahead and leave a Kong right here in front of our viewing window. Cause here in a little bit, y'all will hopefully get a good up close view. Let's head on over here. We'll leave the other one right next to the water's edge. But I wanna give you all a great big bear view so we can kind of see their water feature that they were swimming in. But this morning when I arrived here at Riverbanks, I couldn't help but notice our bears were in this. It might be a little hard to tell. We'll go ahead and kind of step down into it. This was the bear bed from last night. They dug this all through and were found sleeping in it this morning. Our bears have natural substrate all throughout their habitats. That way they're able to dig and rut around. Our keepers will actually bury food on occasion too. So that way we can encourage all those different natural behaviors. All right, it looks like we did all the enrichment. Everything's out and about. We filled up all the things. What else do we wanna kind of point out quick? Oh, we get asked this all the time. How do you kind of anchor the enrichment? What are some other features that you might want to show us this morning? So we have a pool out here because um, grizzly bears in the wild would spend a lot of time in the pool catching fish. So we always have a pool when we have bears. Um, we have a lot of logs out here because in the wild they would tear up trees to get grub or fruits and vegetables off of the trees. So the best part that we have out here that they love the most is this giant area where they can dig. So, <laughs> In the wild, bears would dig, 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 dig for fruits, vegetables, maybe even a little animal or something. So in the summertime especially, they'll take time just digging these giant holes and then we have to bring out big <laughs> like tractors out here to fill in the holes because they have those big claws and they can do it in a couple of minutes. But for us to use a shovel, it would take us hours. <laughs> so we bring out big equipment out here. That is awesome. It is all about encouraging those natural behaviors. And today, with all the enrichment that we kind of hit around the habitat, we want to encourage that natural foraging behavior. Bears do a little bit of hunting, but they also do a bit of browsing as well and actually searching for different plant matter. And today they're going to be searching specifically for popcorn matter all throughout their habitat. But it looks like we're all set. Everything is all out and ready. Let's go ahead and head on over to the back as well. I want to go ahead and give another quick turnaround view since we're joined by both of our keepers, I wanna give you kind of a quick view. This is the door that we came through over here. And then over there is our big viewing area. You can actually probably see our reflection over there. 
but we're gonna head over there and we're gonna actually view the bears coming out on habitat this morning it's a beautiful day here at riverbanks everything's all set and ready i think we're good to go yeah all right ladies i think we should go ahead head on back and it sounds like our bears are probably going to get the rest of their diet because, of course, they don't just eat apples and popcorn. They're going to get the rest of their diet later today, I'm guessing. Yeah, we'll give them a toss later. <laughs> awesome. Sounds like a plan. Let me go ahead and slide this glove off quick as we're kind of going through our behind-the-scenes area. Thanks so much, Christina. Our bears are eagerly waiting. Here's they knew exactly what they were doing. Oh, okay, so what we were talking about earlier... Christina was kind of showing us their preferred diet. This is kind of their dry food. It's made for omnivores. Those who are tuning in earlier this week, we talked about omnivores with our box turtle. Same idea, just a little bit different style diet. And then some delicious sweet potatoes as well. So it may not seem like a lot of food right now, but as their hunger increases, we actually increase their diet so they can gain that weight for when they go into torpor in the winter time. And then in the winter, we'll decrease it as they start eating less. So their diet changes so much throughout the season. That's true not only in the wild, but especially here at Riverbanks too. Their appetite's changing, but then also the seasonality of the food in the wild would be changing too, which means they would be eating different things. So right now they weigh about 500 pounds each and they'll get up to 600 to 650 pounds before winter hits. Whoa, okay, so they're, <laughs> that is a whole lot. Say it again, what are those numbers again? So they're about 500 pounds right now, and then they'll get up to between 600 and 650 pounds um, in the winter time when they head into that torpor. Jeez so they Louise. have a big increase and big decrease in weight. Right now they're about at their lowest weight. Wow, okay, so that's normal for a bear's weight yeah. to fluctuate that much. It wouldn't be normal for our weight to fluctuate that much. <laughs> bears are a little different than us in that sense. <laughs> How interesting. All right, so now we've got a peek of their diet. I think we're ready to actually head on out. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera real quick. So we're gonna say goodbye to Christina and Catherine. Thanks so much though. We're gonna radio them in just a second because we're gonna head on out to the front area and then y'all have the bears come out and join us. Yes. Sound good. All right, everybody. We're gonna make our way back out over into the public area. Ugh. And then we're gonna see y'all in a bit. Thanks so All much. Right, bye. All right, everybody. Let's head on over. The keepers now are going to do their final check through, which is extra important. Safety is our top priority here at Riverbanks. And they're going to make sure that those bears are secure, the habitat secure, there's no other staff or anything that we might've left out their equipment or supplies or anything like that. So if you remember when we were together for our otter experience, I'm gonna try to get through this gate here real quick. Um, we kind of zipped behind the scenes quick to get back to that front part of the habitat. We're going to do the same thing. So it's just me and all of you. And actually because of that, let me go ahead and slide down this mask since it's just me and all of you. Thank you all so much for staying with us. I know you don't necessarily want to see my face for an extended period of time. So we are going to rush out there as fast as we can, get our radio ready. And we are going to then call the keepers and see the bears enjoy all of our hard work this morning. They are gonna to wanna to eat that popcorn, especially since it's covered in honey and cinnamon and use those big, powerful noses. Here, let me go ahead and turn around the camera, show you where we are now. We are in the zoo's main plaza. It's all these weird trap doors that we have, all these little hidden passageways. I will be honest, this is a very surreal view. It's such a beautiful day at Riverbanks and it breaks our heart that we are temporarily closed right now and I've been seeing all those messages come through that y'all miss Riverbanks. We miss seeing you so much too. We hope to be joined again soon. We promise to keep y'all updated. Oh, I did want to point out though quick as we're walking. I was wearing my South Carolina Strong shirt today. It's a Riverbank Zoo and Garden. I want to remind y'all again, if you didn't hear about it last week, we actually just initiated an online store. So head on over. You can get a shirt just like this. And everyone who is wondering... If we are getting kid sizes or children sizes for this shirt, good news, they're on their way. We're ordering them and we'll keep you updated when there are those youth sizes for all of you who are interested. It was a great question to ask. All right, everybody, we are here in front of our grizzly bear habitat. Let's go ahead and radio our keepers and let them know. Milo to Catherine and Christina. We are out here in front of Grizzly Bear Habitat and ready for the bears to come on out. And for the way out, just a minute. Perfect. They're ready to go. They copied us. 
They're gonna do, like I said, those final check through, make sure everything is safe and secure, and then they're going to bring those bears out. Now I wanna go ahead and turn around this camera again. Hopefully you're not getting seasick with us. You remember last week, it was Friday of last week, we talked about bird strikes and we talked about what we were doing to treat the windows to prevent those birds from striking our glass windows during migratory season. We've kept that paint up. So this is all just temporary tempera paint that we've added to these viewing windows. So we're gonna try to get a good view of the bears even through this, but we did a good job last week when Sundance was in the pool swimming. So we'll be able to get a closer look but I do want to check though. Oh, here come the bears. <laughs> I don't want to miss them. You can hear a train passing around in the distance, but that doesn't bother our bears one bit. They are headed out. They are honed in on those snacks. They are using those noses, trying to find all those yummy, delicious snacks that we hid for them. Let's go get a closer look. Andrea, I am so glad to hear that you ordered one of the shirts. I can't wait for you to wear it out in public too and show it on off. Show that you are South Carolina strong. Thanks so much for sharing with us again. All right, so everybody, it looks like Sundance came sauntering out and went ahead and laid down. Maybe you can see him. Let's go ahead and try to zoom in a little bit. He laid down right behind one of those rocks. There must be a Kong that's back there or maybe a pile of popcorn. <clears throat> All right, everybody, it looks like our bears are sniffing around. They're trying to find all those different snacks. Y'all are sending in such great comments. I love the new Facebook feature, that care, that hug reaction that you can do instead of liking or loving something, keep them coming. Now you can get a good view of what Catherine is talking about during that kind of seasonal change of our bears. You can kind of tell that they don't look as fuzzy as they normally would. They're shedding right now. They're going through that seasonal shed. Oh. Butch just grabbed up one of those Kong toys. Do you see it in his mouth? And now he's gonna hold it with those big, long claws. Those claws can get upwards of almost six feet long. They're almost as long as even our fingers are long. And they are highly adapted for digging and kind of breaking open things, say like tree bark. And today they're very good at holding Kongs to lick out popcorn surprises. <laughs> I am so glad that 600 of you are still tuning in with us. There's a lot of steps to get us to where we are right now. Let me go ahead and take a step back though because we got a, another friend joining us. Butch is right on over here. Let me zoom out a little bit. That might help. We got both of our bears hanging out right next to the window here because if you remember, this was the Kong that we left out together and Butch went ahead and found it. Good for him. Look at that big tongue. Hopefully you can get a view of it. Of course, he's gonna do a quick drive by, bring his Kong to where he might wanna eat it instead. But right behind him, you can see that Sundance has his own. Of course, since there are two bears, and you know how siblings can be sometimes, their sharing is not their top priority. So we always give them plenty of options. So that way they don't necessarily have to share everything. So they have their own Kongs that they can play with. Let's go ahead and focus past all this painting. There you go. Hopefully you all can see a little bit better now. Let's zoom on in. Oh, Stacy, I'm so sorry if I said six feet on the claws. It's about six inches, excuse me. I'm so glad you mentioned that. <laughs> SK Rogers, great question. How do we tell the bears apart? Easiest way is going to be kind of their color. Butch is typically a little bit on the darker side. And Sundance, easiest way for me to remember is Sunny Sundance, and he is a little bit blonder. So he's a little bit lighter in color. Carl, you're absolutely right. They do have those extremely long tongues and they use those out in the wild looking for grubs and other foods that they could forage for. Being omnivores, they'll eat just about anything from plant matter to fish to meat. And today they are using those long tongues to get the popcorn. Asher, Jackson, and Judah, how fast can they run? You'd be surprised to hear that bears can actually get up and go. They're pretty quick animals. Now, not for necessarily long periods of times, they're not going to be running for fun, um, but bears actually are very, very quick. Our bears, of course, aren't going to have to be this morning. They know that they can take their sweet time looking for all their snacks. All right, everybody, it looks like, oh, wrapped up. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. There you go, you can see a little bit better. <laughs> They're just littering all of these different Kongs all around the habitat. After they finish them up, they head over to the next one. 
Here's a good view that you can all see them from. Oh, Felicia was wondering, what is in the brown paper bags that they sometimes get inside their habitat? So the bears actually get a lot of different types of enrichment. Our keepers here in this area are very, very creative. Bears are very intelligent animals, so we're constantly challenging them in new ways. In fact, if you look in the background, you can see one of their tires actually out on habitat with them as a form of enrichment. But those brown bags sometimes are filled with snacks or sometimes even filled with scents too. Sometimes they'll spray different colognes or perfumes or even like scented apple or room sprays that are safe, of course, for the bears, essential oils sometimes as well, um, to really make them work that sense of smell. So if you notice, I'm having a hard time keeping up with these bears. They're heading all around their habitat. But right now we are zoomed in on Butch. He's sitting way back there by that tire. Look at his head peek up over the corner. <laughs> it looks like one of the keepers must have hid something in that tire. What a great view. A tire is a great example of some non-natural enrichment, some kind of novelty um, that our bears like to manipulate. Oh, it looks like he's uninterested in it now. Let's go ahead and zoom back a little bit. Head on over here, try to get another view through all of this great paint that we've added to the viewing windows during migratory bird season. Here's a view of Sundance. He is heading over trying to look for his own special snacks this morning. Those of you who are just joining in on the tail end of seed learning this morning, today we were with our grizzly bears. We went behind the scenes. I encourage you to go back and watch the entire feature because we got to see a training session with our grizzly bears. We got to head inside the grizzly bear habitat and now we're watching them forage all around looking for our snacks this morning. But as our bears continue to search around their habitat, I want a big, huge thank you. Send it on out to all of you. Thank you so much once again for joining us for Z Learning. We could not do this without you. Creating all these connections virtually might not be our top option. Of course, we would rather you all be here in person, but right now we are so excited to be able to make these connections with all of you, virtual or not. We wanna bring riverbanks into all of your homes. Now I will be honest, I actually just went ahead and finalized our schedule for next week Z Learning feature. We have a pretty busy schedule. In fact, we're gonna start strong next Monday morning at 10 a.m. We're actually going to be heading over to our giraffes again. We're not gonna be heading to our feeding deck though this time. Instead, we are going to head to our giraffe barn and get a very cool behind the scenes look. So join us on Monday morning. But those of you who follow us, of course, all the time and are checking all of our posts, you know that Tuesday is Midlands Gives, is our big fundraising day, not only here locally, but also Giving Tuesday all around the world. And we have a very packed day. We have three different features, not one, not two, but three different Z Learning adventures in one day. We're gonna start at 10 a.m. for a very special behind the scenes look at our animal hospital for the first time ever. You all are going to join us for an animal procedure. One of our animals is going to have a veterinary procedure, so join us at 10 a.m. That's on Tuesday, though, so make sure to join on Monday first and have Tuesday on your radar because that's our first feature. Then we have a second one and a third one just on Tuesday. Thank you all so much, though, for joining in. Oh, hold on. Wait a second. I just saw a comment come in. Allison, in all caps, can you do the Komodo Dragons? Yes, Allison. Stick around for next week because Friday, I think we might make you a happy individual. Thank you all so much for joining for Z Learning this week, and we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Hang tight and stay safe.